Okay, so today we're going to chat about uh, requirements for the software that we use. So it's a really, really common scenario that comes up is people talking about, um, do we need a particular computer? Do we need a particular laptop? Um, those kinds of questions. So uh, given it comes up all the time, uh, let's try and attack this and see, see what simple questions we can answer. So first of all, software. There's a really common um, uh, trait, if I can put it this way, that's around the market that says all you need is a web browser to access web-based systems, cloud-based systems. Theoretically true, um, if you're using a web browser, you can go to Google, you can go to Zero Accounting, you can log on to your point of sale. However, there's a lot more that goes in behind that. So I just wanted to spell a myth ever so slightly. So all you need is a web browser, Yes, technically true, but there's a lot more to know about hardware, software. We're not going to get into a four-hour lecture here. We're going to do a 10-minute video, but um, just to try and give you the, the, the basics that we see people miss fairly often. So hardware first. So the hardware is essentially the, the hard thing you use to uh, access systems, so the, the, the box, the laptop, the device, the phone, whatever it might be. So there's a few different options. Um, PC, so something running Windows, whether that's a laptop or a, a box. Uh, Mac, uh, using Apple operating system. Uh, a tablet, whether that's an iPad or an Android tablet, um, things like Samsung Galaxy, things like that. Um, personal phone. Um, and there's also other hardware to consider here, so things like um, printers, barcode scanners, label makers, thing, things like that for the specific software that we use. So from a hardware point of view, um, there's a few things to look for. Um, it's very difficult to predict, so we're doing this video in 2017. Um, I can give you stats right now of roughly how much RAM you should look for in a device. Um, it's going to be obsolete by the end of the year. Things are always changing. Um, the really, really nice thing is that with the cloud SaaS system that we use, all of the work is done at the other end. So let's take um, accounting platforms, Zero, QuickBooks Online, things like that. Um, they have the big grunty servers at the, for want of a better word, other end of the line, doing all the work and all the processing. So you can generally get away with a fairly lean computer. So um, I commonly use a, a Chromebook um, just here. Just dead simple, 300 Australian dollar laptop works absolutely fine. Now, it doesn't do some of the more advanced things that some people will need, like uh, complex spreadsheeting, uh, photo work, video work, that kind of stuff. It's just for me to use on the move, flying between different things. What I wanted to touch on here, however, is the more important area, which is around what that hardware runs. So if you're using a PC, um, you'll be running Windows of some kind normally. Uh, if you're running a Mac, you'll be running Apple operating system, usually um, what's called OS X, so there's, there's version uh, 10 point something uh, is probably the most common one that you're gonna be using. Uh, tablets run their own platform, phones run their own platform as well. What really, really matters here is the version of operating system that you're running. Uh, the reason for a big fat seven here in the middle. So um, let's talk Windows. So Windows originally had Windows XP way back when. Uh, went through Windows Vista, which everyone hopes they could forget. Uh, Windows 7 is a, was a really, really common platform, very, very stable. Then because Windows can't count, there's been uh, Windows 8 and then Windows 10 for some reason. So Windows 10 is currently, as of the time of making this video, the most common uh, platform to see for sale, but it isn't the most commonly used. So Windows 7 is still, um, by Gartner ratings this year, the most used of the Windows platforms, which is worrying because it's unsupported by Microsoft. So the important point here of whatever hardware you're running is, is to keep up with updates. So phones and, and tablets are very good at this. Your, your iPhone or your Android phone will ping every second day and tell you that Facebook's done an update, Google's done an update, this has done an update. Um, 
generally those are fairly safe to do as well. Now, every few months, uh, the operating system will do an update. So generally when Apple release a new iPhone or um, when Google do updates, they'll update their operating system. So the iPhone operating system started out, uh, a lot of people don't remember this, but started out, you couldn't send picture messages, you couldn't do group texts, you couldn't join phone calls, all kinds of things like that. Um, the most recent operating system upgrades have added in split sharing, screen sharing, and things like that. Most important thing here is to make sure you upgrade. There's always a period of days, sometimes a short number of weeks, where you upgrade and some of your applications get a little bit buggy because they haven't always done their work upgrading. But you should always ensure you're on the latest update. Simplest example comes from this year with some of the uh, kind of big, bigger malware jobs that we've seen that have taken out things like um, NHS operations, doctors in the US, um, banks in, in Eastern Asia. Now, most of our clients are, are, frankly, with no disrespect, little small businesses. They're not the target of international kind of operations, but it only takes one click to lose access to your computer. Um, and Gary Turner, who runs Zero in the UK, shared something a couple of days ago with an accounting firm that lost everything for two weeks um, purely as a result of a, a virus on one of their computers. Now, when bigger um, problems are announced or bigger holes are found in the system, generally the providers will patch them as soon as they possibly can. It's what's called an incremental update. So you might see that Apple operating system uh, has moved from uh, OS 8 to OS 8.1 or 8.0.1. Um, basically, small little patch fix, but must be done as soon as you get it, otherwise you are vulnerable. Single most important part, exactly the same with accessing systems. So Microsoft officially now do not support Windows 7 as of uh, this is July 2017. Um, you can Google um, uh, Microsoft Windows support lifecycle and it will tell you when every product's going to run out of lifecycle. Um, it's in extended support, which means that if something catastrophic happened to it, then Microsoft would fix it, but it's not in mainstream support. So it's, it's the thing that people will be trying to target. Single biggest probably takeaway from this quick little video is exactly that to make sure you are keeping up. So you should be on the latest OS on your phones, tablets, you should be on the latest version at least, um, possibly the one before, but the, the last or previous for both Windows and um, Mac OS. Um, and if you need any general help of where to find this information, in a general sense, it's in System and Control Panel for Windows, it's in uh, the top Apple option and about for Mac, um, but put a comment if you want to know any more details. So, browsers now. So whether you're using um, Mac OS, Windows, um, or a tablet or phone, you'll use a browser to browse the web, obviously. Now, um, in recent times, Google Chrome has become the most popular. Um, probably the ones that you will know will be Google Chrome, Firefox, uh, Microsoft Edge, which used to be Internet Explorer, uh, Safari if you're on Apple or iPhone. It's kind of a personal opinion. Um, lots of the vendors that we use, uh, Zero for Accounting, uh, Inventory Providers, Point of Sale, will recommend Chrome. It's generally seen as about the most stable, it's generally seen as about the easiest to use. Um, first piece of advice purely would be if you get uh, any form of little bug or anything like that with um, any system you're accessing, um, especially one of the ones that we support, um, always check that you're using a common browser and again, a latest version. Um, worst case, I would try another browser. So generally we use Chrome for everything. Um, Microsoft Edge comes uh, built in with Windows PCs. Safari comes built in with Mac. So you've always got another browser if you want to try things. So one important thing that we have to raise with Chrome is that it's a memory hog. Um, it's something that's starting to become more and more common. Google are fixing it with every release that they do. 
Um, but it's something to be very, very aware of. So here you can see uh, just before I did a quick check, um, I was running a few things just on my Windows computer. And Chrome, you'll see here from, so 88% of the computer's memory is being used. Um, now I intentionally did this on, on a sort of slower machine, like an older machine, but you can see here um, various things running, um, including MYOB for accounting, um, a uh, tool for taking screenshots, the task manager using minimal amounts of memory, and Chrome is using almost uh, 20 times more than most of the other platforms. Now, obviously it's asking in the web and it's doing lots and lots of things, but this is a known issue with Chrome is that it does become very, very resource heavy. So one of the things that I recommend just as general advice is to make sure that you uh, close down Chrome every so often, make sure you close down and restart your computer every so often, because um, that will effectively clear the memory and will allow things to run a little bit faster. Um, that's probably the biggest piece of advice to kind of take out of here. A couple of other little general pieces of advice and just things to be aware of. So there's a site called cloudping.info um, that you can go to any time and you can run a test to look at what's called your ping um, to various servers around the world. So these kind of things are useful if you're getting um, slowness. So if it seems slow accessing websites, platforms, things like that. One reason can be the memory on your computer, uh, the last slide we looked at. The other one here can be your ping. Essentially, uh, to kind of water it down, what happens is your computer goes out to a server somewhere in the world, um, locations are all listed here, sends, what's called it sends a packet, but it sends a ping to that server and receives it back. Effectively, it's an, it's an echo. So it shouts into a tunnel, waits how long until it gets that information back. The MS here is milliseconds, so you are talking seriously quick speeds, but you can see here as an example, I ran this test in Australia, and you can see uh, the Sydney server came back nearly 10 times faster than most of the other options. So um, generally it's good to look at an average of these, if you're getting pings over about the 400 to 500 mark, especially as an average, that's probably going to appear slower than you would like when you're accessing web services. The other one, which is well known, is webtest.net. Um, this is a site you can go to. There's a big button in the middle that just says run test, and it will just run a speed test for you. Um, again, it will give you your ping in milliseconds. Um, it'll also give you a download and an upload speed. Um, people quite often ask about what, what's a good speed. It, it's very, very difficult to say. Again, it depends on the nature of what you're accessing. Um, I would generally say, though, that you want an upload, preferably, of at least one meg. Now, here, where I've run this, we've got um, uh, broadband fiber network, so we've got no issue at all with speed. Um, we've seen clients with downloads and uploads as slow as one meg. Um, you don't have to have any particular download or upload speed, um, again, because all you're doing is accessing a website, but you will certainly spot slowdowns um, with particular low speeds, doing things like generating PDFs, like invoices, uh, purchase orders, and things like that. So it's worth asking us if you've got any queries with it. Hopefully that proved useful. Uh, a quick probably 10, 15, maybe, haven't been counting. Um, minutes just going through some of the common things that we see. Um, biggest takeaways are gonna be uh, for software wise, make sure you're running uh, latest operating systems, latest browsers uh, with hardware, um, keep up to date with updates um, and make sure your system is reasonably new. Um, the other point to know with hardware is um, there are other pieces of hardware that uh, customers and, and people that we know use things like um, printers, barcode scanners, label makers, um, things like that. For those, you are always best to test them directly with the system you want to use. Um, unfortunately, we, with what we do, uh, system implementation, we can't warranty that side of it. We can warranty that the system will work, that things will do what you expect, but hardware like that is one of those things where every single one is different. So unless we've um, sourced it, installed it, and implemented it, we can't necessarily warranty it, um, but we can certainly give general advice. Browsers we talked about, and a couple of sites are there for the uh, net speeds on the last couple of slides. 
hopefully that was useful. Um, comments are always welcome if you have any. Um, otherwise, if we can go into a bit more detail, uh, feel free to contact us. You can jump on to assizedigital.com um, or you can email inquiries at assizedigital.com. Thanks so much and have a good rest of your day, evening, weekday, weekend, whenever you're watching. Thanks very much.